So I'm experimenting more with the screen recording and seeing how my voice is going to come out and see if I can narrate over some of this. And I decided the best thing I could do is choose was uh, Terrence Howard's brilliant address to Oxford. Uh, let's, let's hear it. Wow, I know we're starting a bit late. Um, we're trying to get some stuff loaded up that we won't be able to use, so we're gonna do it a little differently now. We're gonna do it manually, eye to eye, person to person. I'm Terrence Howard and I'm so honored to have been invited here to speak at Oxford. Um, <laughs> Chris is so- By the way, they, I, I think the whole thing is they, they invited him there as a joke to openly mock him uh, and you'll see why. Oh, magnificent. He's been the kindest person and he's really an angel for you guys because he can bring a ton of people here just with his kind words. Um, how many of you are interested in acting? None. Great. So let me say this. He goes on like this tirade about acting and, and, and all that stuff and it's, it seems actually mostly normal. Uh, and then he starts getting into some really strange things. I'm not really sure how and when it starts, but let's let's fast forward just a little bit. Person, when we get about 13 or 14, we get embarrassed of him. And we push him aside and we don't listen to him anymore. And he's always knocking. Hey, hey. And after so long of a time, maybe 10, 15 years, you don't even know him. You show up at your own door and you don't even know who you are. Your family doesn't know who you are. So it's important no matter what. I'm sure yours have a lot of questions. The thing is, uh, with Terrence Howard, it's like if he, if he was not an actor and talking about acting right now, he would seem absolutely unhinged. Like if this were just a random person on the street, maybe like a homeless person that was saying this kind of stuff to you, you'd be like, I need to, to get the authorities. Let's, let's, let's keep listening. What you do, no matter what challenges you go through, you remember who you are. You may think you've been here for 20 years on this planet, but we know that energy, it is forever. It doesn't die, it continually recycles itself. So you know that you've been a trilobite 350 million years ago, or some part of it. Some parts of you were part of a, a pterodactyl. Every one of us have been a part of everything in this universe. So if we tap into those things in ourselves and remember those things in ourselves, we have that power. Now, my vocation has been an actor and I've loved that. I've been able to take care of my family as an actor, but that's never been my passion. I was an actor because it was like Jesus walking on water for tips because he could do it. That's what he did. It was a natural. Whoa, 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 wait, what, what the hell does that even mean? That, we, we need to go back to that. Hold up, hold on. But that's never been my passion. I was an actor because it was like Jesus walking on water for tips. Because he could do it. That's what he did. It was a natural thing for him. <laughs> what? I've always been an empath. I was. Oh wait, did Jesus walk on water for tips? Like, is that in the Bible that he was like, he had like a tip jar out there? Is it a metaphor? I don't understand what's going on. I don't get it. Let's, let's, let's keep watching always been emotionally connected to everything. But the thing that I was most spiritually connected to, that was my driving force, was physics. Yeah, but see, now here comes the, 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 the schizophrenia, where, I mean, I'm not a doctor. I'm not gonna say that I am, but, again, trying to take apart this lecture, um, it sounds pretty astounding given that it's like a famous person or a person that's achieved a lot in their life giving this talk, but it really does reveal um, some level of, of really deep mental illness. Let's, let's, let's just watch. It was wondering how the universe really came to be. And I fell in love with this thing called the flower of life. You guys know Da Vinci? Do you know what he... <laughs> Let's pause there. He says, do you know Da Vinci to a group of students at Oxford? He was like, y'all ever heard of Da Vinci? 
They're literally at Oxford. He spent most of his life trying to figure out who in here knows the flower of life? Couple, I'm gonna get you something. Oh, here come the props. Here comes like the, the carrot top bag. Because I want you guys <laughs> to know. Do you want me to hold it? Huh? Do you want me to hold it? Okay. No, no, I'm okay. <laughs> you I want you guys to know about a 6,000 year oh, old. That guy. And that guy in the back, like he's, he's, he's grinning now. Look at him. He's having a great time. He's like this, he's about to embarrass himself. Let's Secret. Watch. 6,000 years, mankind has been trying to decipher this one little thing called the flower of life. Now do you know the flower of life? Have you guys ever seen this before? Now you know this is one of the oldest symbols. So yeah, I've seen that like on my uh, wallpaper. In um, human history, right? Or do you not know? This symbol was found in the <laughs> Temple of Osiris. You think you know. Get ready for the back to school season. Oh, Living spaces mad. where our kids and teens collections earn an A plus for stuff. In Egypt. That? And it had been molecularly burned into the wall. And it's 6,000 years old. This, this same symbol has been found in the, the forbidden temples in China, sitting under the fufu dogs. And the foot on it, the flower of life, saying whoever controlled that flower of life controlled the universe. There were secrets in that flower of life <laughs> that da Vinci spent his whole life trying to uncover. There were secrets in that flower of life that Newton spent his whole Newton? life in secret no, trying Newton? to uncover. The same secrets was that Pythagoras was okay. desperately trying Pythagoras. to uncover. But there Pythagoras, who was, by the way, who was a maniac. The problem was, they kept seeing this in a two-dimensional space. Because what you're holding up is two-dimensional. You're holding up a two-dimensional representation of whatever it is that you're trying to describe. So yes, it is two-dimensional. They couldn't get it out of this two-dimensional frame. And as a result, they got stuck in this plane, a flat plane. Now, what da Vinci and all of them wanted to do, they were trying to find a way to bring this flower to life because what is inside of it? Well, apparently, there were secrets inside of it. Shapes, they got the macurba and all of those secrets. other things out of it. But they were misled by something I think called a straight line. You guys believe in straight lines? You believe there's straight lines in the universe? Really well, let me hit oh you with God. something. Listen, he was like, do you believe in straight lines? <laughs> what he just asked. As in like, I don't know. I don't know. Was it, what is he saying? Is he saying that there's theoretically no such thing as a straight line? Is he saying that, uh, you know, you can never construct something that's completely straight? Or like at the, you know, at a micro microscopic level or is he saying because a straight line is is literally a theoretical concept in mathematics it's something that you draw between two points like we're going back to like euclid's you know five axioms and yes like in that regard i do believe in, in straight lines all energy in the universe is expressed in what it's in motion if something is still there's no energy <laughs> connect right That's it. Really? all that, motion that is expressed in what you look at galaxies, are they expressing straight lines? Expressed in vortices. <laughs> All vortices are expressed Vortice. in what? Waves. All waves are curved. <laughs> show this me a straight getting... line in nature. <laughs> show you me show me where the platonic solids come from. Where do they have their foundations in our universe? Oh, God. Okay, so now he's going to go off, I think, on this thing about platonic solids, which... Again, platonic solids are these theoretical mathematical objects, which are three-dimensional objects, which are made up of, of regular polygons, and, and they have applications, you know, to certain things. Um, but he's going to go off on this thing that, like, oh, we we believe that everything's based on platonic solids, and that actually was an old uh, belief that people had, like many like many years ago where there was an idea of like, okay, if everything can be broken down into like elements and atoms and protons and neutrons or whatever, maybe we can break everything down into platonic solids. Like the tetra tetrahedron, the icosahedron, the dodecahedron, like all the different 
of Poisson Science. But that theory is no longer accepted in modern mathematics because it's completely off the rails. And what's funny about this is Terence Howard is like against this theory of platonic solids being the basis for everything, even though that's not even a theory that's commonly accepted. So he's arguing against something that we don't even currently believe in the current community of mathematics. Just going to point that out, and physics, just going to point that out. Let's hear his, um, more of his, you know, completely off the rails rambling of, of, of nonsense. Are there any straight lines? If you look at anything, there are no straight lines. That's been the mistake we've been looking at. The Maybe that's the medical condition. These straight lines, this Euclidean way of thinking and missing the curvature of nature. So here we are, back with the curvature of nature. And you have all these little pieces. Now, this has always been an information system. So comp compare some of these points. Take a point here and say, well, what's the space in between all of these things? Now, they've said that all the in-between spaces, if this is the Earth and this is the moon right here, all this in-between space is filled with what? A void. There's nothing in the void. Well, I found that there is something in the void. The elementary <laughs> fundamental particles that they've been searching for at the CERN this collider, is... the Hadron Collider in CERN. Mm. I found that their this energy is... signatures matched perfectly <laughs> to some of the pieces the that I was able to pull out of here. So I'm going to bring some of those. You can see the crowd starting to, they're starting to turn to them, to turn to each other and be like, like, is this an act? Is the, I know he's an actor. He's an actor. Is he making this up? Is this like, because it's so, it becomes so totally unhinged that it's, it's, it's so ridiculous. Let's watch. Oh, no. Do I have a minute? Am I good? Okay. But now, all of this was supposed to be on a projector for you guys. I don't have that. Yeah, so like he's so incompetent that even he couldn't even get the PowerPoint to work or whatever. And or he'll get up to the projector or somebody there didn't want to help him with it or he didn't want to ask for help or something. I'm betting. And he was like, I brought a literally I brought like a suitcase full of like, you know, weird shit that's supposed to convince you of my theory that has absolutely no basis in reality. So what I do have is a bit of a Chanel bag, or an old Chanel bag, a box, as it were. And we're going to talk about a couple of items in here that are so hard to even express here. Afterwards, you're going to have to just take a look at these. I wish I was there. Oh God, person. I won't have the time so, to do this it. This would have been amazing. Oh, Jesus. I couldn't show you, but I am going to show you. <laughs> I didn't come here not to show you. And it's like, you know, right now there, you see how the crowd laughed? It was like, I think it was, they were looking for an opportunity to let their laughter go because they're in their heads, they're laughing at him. Now he makes a little joke and they're like, oh, now I can comfortably laugh and it'll seem like I'm laughing at his stupid little joke or whatever. But Overall, like I think the majority of the audience is either there just out of curiosity, and and some of them are literally there to to troll him in person. Whether you guys are able to express, understand some of these things, Lord help me, good confused. This is so weird. What I've done is I've figured out about seventy different seven different elementary particles, fundamental particles. And then there were secondary generational particles that seemed to occur. And when these things began to build up more and more, they began to create their own systems. And these systems is what I brought to Oxford because I would like for you guys to examine them, put them to test. He literally, they, they invited him there to speak about acting. And he's literally like, I brought all this work that I've been doing on theoretical physics, which has absolutely no basis in reality. And uh, it's, it's actually, it's quite embarrassing just to watch this. Because I bet you, you will find all the fundamental particles that they've been looking for in the unified theory of the universe. It's a big statement, but I've got a lot of stuff yeah. to back it up. I don't if, think you uh, do. Given the opportunity. 
to do so, but the flower of life has been open. Go ahead. And when we go get an opportunity, it. I'd love to show you some of these things. Do it, do it. Can I go on? Yep. Even, even though your PowerPoint didn't work, but go Oops. ahead. <laughs> I can't, without, having to, without being able to show the pieces, it's a whole different monster. But all of these wave conjures. Yeah, we're, we're going to believe that this guy found not only seven different elementary particles that, that physicists have spent their lives searching for, we're also going to believe that he says that they developed their own system and that only he knows this system that I guess the particles themselves developed, which doesn't really make much sense, but he cannot figure out how to work a PowerPoint. Moving on. All of these states of matter, all of these things, there's time, it's time for that to be changed now. We have changed all of our, our buildings to be aerodynamic. Our airplanes are no longer based on a two-dimensional Euclidean way of life. But Hold on there. Our airplanes are not based on a two-dimensional Euclidean. No, no, no. Airplane most of that is actually based on spherical geometry because guess what we live on earth which is approximately a sphere um it's spherical so things like gps coordinates and triangulation and all that rely on spherical geometry which is non-euclidean and you're right in that regard but i don't think that you quite know what you're saying but our math is still based on a two-dimensional way and i think no it's not even I, I can teach, I've taught three dimensional coordinates to ninth graders. I think in order for us to reach the future, we have to examine that. Do you guys know about um, loops in math? Do you believe in loops? Do you know? Again, he says believe in. Do you believe in loops? Like, what does that mean? Like, like he's, he's, he's equating mathematical definitions with faith and, and belief, and like, he's making it very, like, religious kind of which is really strange. It's not, it's not even like offensive or weird. It's just, it's, I mean, it's weird, yes, but it's not, like, it's just odd. I think the crowd, mostly, if you look at their faces and reactions going forward, I think they're mostly just confused and interested, but, but mostly confused. The square root of two? Do you think that's a loop? Hold on, let's, let's go back a little bit, because he's going to say some weird, stupid... Shit, and as a person that has a mathematics degree and has instructed mathematics for years, uh, it, this is going to be really sure. weird. We have to examine that. Do you guys know about um, loops in math? Do you believe in loops? Do you know the square root of 2? Do you think that's a loop? So the square root of 2 is about 1.41 something. It doesn't really matter as far as accuracy or precision goes past that point. Now, what he's going to do here is something really weird. He's going to try to impress the audience with uh, something that is extremely trivial, extremely arbitrary, and can be proven uh, very easily, which I have proven it. Uh, just He gives two things that are equivalent, and because he keeps dividing or subtracting, whatever the hell he's doing, he keeps getting the same numbers over and over. And he's like, oh, that's a loop. And I'm like, okay, I can do that for a lot of things. I could square a number and then take the square root. Then I can square it again, then take the square root, and then square it again. And, take, and I keep getting the same repeated numbers because you're just undoing those ma those natural mathematical operations using the inverse uh, mathematical function. And it, there's nothing surprising about it. It's almost like, I don't know. It's like if you're doing like a little sleight, sleight of hand card trick kind of thing and and trying to impress people and another thing that he does that i've noticed that people that don't know anything about what they're talking about but they're trying to seem like they know math is he's memorized a lot of the digits of some of these constants like i think he's about to quote the square root of two which again me as a person that's instructed uh, mathematics for years um, it's about 1.41 and it doesn't matter past that point it doesn't really matter. It, it's it's a transcendental number. It's a um, an irrational number. Um, but it is about 1.41. And the same thing with pi. People tend to quote every digit of pi. And they think it makes them sound smart. 3.14. And I, I honestly, I know up to like what? 3.14159265 something. 
doesn't matter. It has absolute at that at that level of precision, like you don't need to even use the digits. You would rather just use the symbol pi. And a lot of things are done in terms of pi. Now, here's what he's going to try to do. By saying all these digits and getting people with their calculators out that probably don't know, you know, some very basic mathematics, which is surprising for a crowd at Oxford. I think a lot of them do know mathematics. Um, he's going to try to show a little magic trick here, and it's so fucking stupid. Let's, let's watch. Sure. We have to examine that. Do you guys know about um, loops in math? Do you believe in loops? Do you know the square root of two? Do you think that's a loop? Do you believe that the square root of two is the square root of two? Yes or no? Hands up, no? Hello? See, no one even knows what to say because, it, the, because the question itself doesn't make sense. It's not that they're dumb, it's not that he's, yeah, well yeah, it is that he's dumb, but he's asking a question which does not make any sense mathematically, physically, and he's literally an actor, and he's, he's really, really dumb. Oh, I want y'all to take out your phone for a minute then. We're gonna do one thing. Everybody got a phone? Put it on their calculator and turn it to the side so you can get all the long numbers out of it. Okay, now I want you to put in two and square root it. Two, hit the square root, you'll get 1.414213562373095 dot dot dot, right? Now impressive. I want you guys to do me a favor, cube it. It'll see right over there, it'll be x to the three. Can y'all do it? Are you cubed it? It'll see 2.828427121746190. Now that makes sense. I want you guys to do me a favor, divide it by two. <laughs> Got that number? Cube it again. Kohl's is our family's favorite place for back to school shopping. They have all our kids' favorite styles and brands at prices we love. Michael's has new creative supplies for kids, new oh, activities, and ads. new art and craft supplies. Shop today. Divided by two, cube it again, and I want you to do that until the end of your lives. And that number yeah. will still come up with 2.828-4271-2174-6190. We, we were stupid. If we were as stupid as you, we could just uh, spend our lives doing that. But it's, it's completely ridiculous, and it, it actually does not matter, which the phrase I used earlier was trivial. It's, it's completely trivial. Any other number that you, above two, that you put in, and you cube, and you square, cube, and square, and divide by two, by the sixth operation, it has moved into an exponential number that you can't even imagine. Any number below two, that you do that same operation with, it will go into an exponentially small matter. And, and so he's kind of describing convergence to zero versus divergence, which is actually a, it's, it's, it's a good topic, especially in calculus, but again, the example that he's using is just so arbitrary and, and it doesn't matter. And you can prove this in general uh, for things that are of the same form that he's describing, you know, cubing a number and then dividing it by two or whatever. And you can prove that you can have a, you know, conversion series or whatever. So, okay, like, okay, anyone that's taken even pre-calculus could come to that conclusion. Number. This is what we call a loop. It is... Nobody calls it logical. That. It doesn't make sense, and it does not... It makes perfect sense. Make math make sense. Okay, wait, hold on. I had to interrupt him a lot, but let's go back. Same operation with, it will go into an exponentially small matter and number. This is what we call a loop. It is illogical, it doesn't make sense, and it does not make math make sense. So these are some things that, that um, I'm bringing to the fore and that I would like to question. I would like to audit the math, the world of mathematics, and I'd like to audit <laughs> how we view the platonic solids, because I think the new wave conjugation <laughs> will tell a better story of how our world uh, works. It's ridiculous. Uh, it's, it's like if you, oh my God, it's just like, it's like if you hired 
the the least qualified person ever to teach a course in mathematics. This might be some of the weird shit that they would say. It makes no sense. I mean, you can even see some of the audience now smirking. Uh, <laughs> again, they, they and this is not the end of it, but I think I'm going to end this video here pretty soon of me just criticizing Terrence Howard because it had to be done and no one's really made a video about it. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's so appalling that there's people that 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 he believes what he's saying, which literally some of the stuff that he says later on, like he he should be put away in in, in I don't know, like locked up for because because it's just crazy you're just like what's what's he gonna do next is he gonna like you know go on a rampage or something it, it's just insane um anyway that is my criticism uh, of terrence howard part one i think oxford university completely trolled him and um this was also a test to see if my microphone worked in 